have you noticed in the last couple of vlogs we've been like okay we're doing this we're getting this from here we're going there then we're doing that and then yeah, we're we don't do any of it and the last two vlogs we've done completely the opposite yeah. so you know anything could happen completely on this channel the opposite. so today the plan is just to do the next lock and more around bridge 108 wharton's bridge and then take a walk up there's a little trail up to beeston castle which we're hoping is not too expensive to actually visit. I think it's about nine pounds. That's okay. As long as that. George is allowed to go. And then we're going to carry on and go to the very outskirts of Chester. It's a place called Crystleton or Chis... Chris? Crystleton or Chiselton. Yeah. Where there is the Cheshire Cat, which has been recommended. Um, as a place to moor. Yeah, not necessarily as a, as a pub to go to, but they said that there's nice moorings there. Yeah, it was nice here last night. There's no shop anywhere in this... Um, in this town so we've got no chocolate well there is a gift shop over there um but the gentleman who runs the place was quite adamant that if he had chocolate there it would all disappear down <laughs> somebody's gullet and that's the same problem i have on my boat ah, right so can we can we move on, on. yes yeah, so it's a really Ready nice you you're excited no just want to get going okay Blind. and the sun's come out so let's just go <laughs> hopefully it'll be a nice day <laughs> arrived at Beeston Castle and it doesn't open for eight minutes. So, here so we're is. turning around and leaving. <laughs> eight minutes. Hell with that. We walked across a field with cows. It was quite nice. Yeah. There was a castle below the castle. A castle? There were cattle below the castle. <laughs> Why haven't Michael's been in the sun too long? <clears throat> I've been in the sun way too long. Well, there's a man with a bow. He got quite a bit of range of firing angles while making it awfully hard for the outside to murder you. Also, some fairly old graffiti. TL, for instance. Took some time. Went with serif font. Not a short choice. Alright, so we're at Beeston Castle made in the, I think, 13th century, although I'm completely off on the dates, uh, by the then Earl of Chester. Uh, Ranouf, the French sounding guy. Anyway, basically it was created as his private castle over his sort of area of control and eventually it got taken over by the royal family as a royal castle, where it stayed in that form for a few hundred years although it did become less and less well used and important and by the 15th century to basically been abandoned it was sold to a uh, private concern actually the, the guy who I believe was the Lord uh, had a little bit of a exciting time around the Civil War Charles and his loyalists the royalists came here seized this castle they snuck in and took it over the guy who actually was in charge of the castle was shot for having abandoned it to the royalists the royalists held the castle and uh, essentially they were able to withstand a siege here for I think it was almost a year until they they basically ran out of food and when they ran out of food they had to surrender when they surrendered the castle was ordered slighted by Cromwell and that's when it was torn down at least partially 
in the 1800s it was used as a quarry so a lot of the stone was removed for, for turning into roads elsewhere it's pretty interesting it's up on a 380 foot tall I think it said uh, sandstone mountain um, that sort of rises up out of the plain view down over the plains and you can imagine that most of those trees down there would have been cleared to provide for the wooden structures that would have been in here and to create farmland that would be used to feed and store the castle. The castle had three stone rings of defenses, so it's got like a primary, secondary, and tertiary defense walls. And the outer one just had a gatehouse, really. It wouldn't have been particularly defended, but it would have acted as a barrier to anybody. People could have moved into the inner one. In here, there probably would have been storehouses and granaries and shops and different things for creating weaponry and leather whatever you needed i guess and then up there in the actual inner ward um it would have been the most like the inner defensive ring there would have been lodgings for whoever was in charge here and probably a prison and lots of stores and stuff and that's where they would have been to withstand the siege because by this point cromwell had guns so it's an interesting story. It's certainly interesting to see old defensive works. When you look at them, it's like, wow, they really were becoming outmoded. By the time this was actually militarily important, it was used in, in the the wars of, I think it was James II against the Welsh, um, but it was like used as a staging area and everything. I don't think it was ever assaulted. By the time it was actually used in its main purpose as a defensive emplacement, it, it, it was already on the way out. Like, all these vertical stone walls and everything, eventually you could have just shot them down, you know, if you had enough cannon. We're back from the castle. We had a lovely touristy morning looking around. It's very interesting. I actually saw them building a Bronze Age roundhouse, which was unexpected. Um, a woman from English Heritage came over and chatted to us about that. So They're building it out of trees that they've sourced locally and they're, well, they didn't actually make the rope, but they've got all this old style rope and they're tying all these willow branches around, oak branches around all sorts of things to make a mm. big circular house. And they've made some mallets themselves. All the joins are with little wooden pegs. So it's pretty cool. And by the saying October, they should have it all thatched up and ready for the winter. And then they spend the next bit of time getting the interior good. So <laughs> it's kind of cool. It's not too far from the castle. It's in a little old quarry because they didn't want to disturb the rest of the archaeological area. And yeah, the castle was like a lovely, lovely place to walk around. Got when they slighted it, they really slighted it. <laughs> Got my history fix from Michael. Got some ice cream, so that was good. Uh, we just come back to the boat and we are going to head on, I think, another seven miles. But I don't think there's any locks. There's no locks. There is just a lot of canal. And because we've walked a lot today, me and George are going to ride on the boat, although George doesn't really know that yet. And pretty sure he's not going to be happy about it when I when I tell him. So. Yeah. And as there's a boat coming down, we better get moving pretty quick. I don't think there is. I might have imagined it. She might have imagined it. <laughs> but either way, we should go because we haven't got anything else to say. I mean, he's always got other things to say. But <laughs> right, ready? Yeah. Okay.
Well, that was a long cruise. Actually, it wasn't that long. Just nothing happened on it. Nothing happened on it. We got flown over by a Beluga, an Airbus Beluga transporter. One of only a small number of such aircraft flew over. This is an airplane that has been mm, rebuilt. Basically, it's a big Airbus airplane and it's been rebuilt and expanded to be like a giant beluga in the sky that swallows other airplane fuselages and then flies them. It is a weird thing to see flying in the sky without warning. Did you find out why it was there? Uh, apparently there's a big airport down here and there's an Airbus manufacturing facility somewhere near here. So, yeah, because that's what it does, is it flies the center section of a airplane fuselage that has been partially manufactured to a place for final assembly where the wings get glued on using Welsh fennel and boiled sugar. <laughs> no, that's the aqueduct. Ah, right, sorry. Other than the visit to the castle this morning, Beeston Castle was really nice. After that, the drive up here was more or less just a couple of big straightaways and a few small curves. So it was a little bit on the um, uneventful side from there. One of the long straightaways was just lined with permanent moorings. Yeah, which but is great, but it meant we had to go very slow. <laughs> so it took ages. And it was a bit of a like a wind trap. Did you notice how many of them had turbines yeah. <laughs> attached? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense because sitting there you'd have pretty much permanent power. That was also the area where the young lad had been killed on the boat, the Usk. Um, but there wasn't really anything there that you could use as a point of reference. That was a poor fellow who had, who had been trying to get onto one of the Shroppy flyboats. And, well, he was getting onto the Shroppy flyboat. That was the last year anybody saw him was getting on a Shroppy flyboat. The next thing what year knew, are we talking? he was lying on the ground. This was the late uh, mid 1800s. And uh, poor fellow, neck broken, half drenched, definitely a murder mystery, and yet at the same time, zero actual reason, like no means, no motive, no opportunity. There was just a guy who had a broken neck. So it could have been an accident. Could have been an accident. Weird accident, because how did he end up half submerged in water, half not? Like at that point, he, he'd broken his, I think it was fourth cervical vertebrae. He'd like completely dislocated. There would have been no way he would have been able to move. So he couldn't have got himself out of the water. So somebody must have got him out of the water. But how did he break his neck? No one knows. <laughs> We've definitely gone from countryside to urban. We're in the outskirts of Chester now, I guess, in Crystleton. The canal continues through the flat but green landscape of the Cheshire Plain, past Waverton with its conspicuous church tower over the fine brick mill by Eggbridge, to the outskirts of the delightful village of Crystleton. Here the towers and chimneys of Chester come into view. When it says the unprepossessing Routon Moor, it means it's got no airs on, which means it's basically featureless. <laughs> Yeah, and there was a battle there. Three miles from Chester, one of the last major battles of the Civil War took place in 1645. Parliamentarians completely routed the Royalists, who, still under fierce attack, retreated to Chester. It is said that King Charles I watched the defeat from the walls of Chester, but it is more probable he saw only the final stages under the walls of the city. Charles fled, leaving 800 prisoners, 600 dead and wounded. It was not a good time to be a royal. Yeah, so the, um, the Forte Al moorings outside the Cheshire Cat, which is what we were aiming for, were all full, so we came beyond them and we're just on a towpath mooring. We couldn't feel the shroppy shelf, so we think we're okay. For up to two weeks. <laughs> um, the only thing is we're outside this building site where it looks like they're building more housing. Mm -hmm. It might be a bit noisy. I'm looking forward to getting into Chester, but I'm also looking forward to not cruising. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. is a Sainsbury's like 15 minutes away. Oh, is there? Yeah. Okay, because that's the thing I'm worried about is that we're out of groceries. I don't, I don't care about groceries, I just care about chocolate. Right. That house, we're just opposite a house, they've got um, like a, it's not a huge garden, they've got a big football um, goal and it's open to the canals. I just wonder how many balls go in the canal. I'm wondering how many times they try and get a full game on and there's just a bunch of kids swimming. <laughs> like water polo on one side, football on the other. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed the tour around Beeston Castle. That's it! That's the guy, that's the, you, you, you can sort of see it. Weird airplane with a very strange top end. That's the Beluga. Can't see it? Okay, that sucks. I want to get a shot of the Beluga. The Beluga is weird. It doesn't look like it should be able to fly. So I hope you enjoyed the video and our trip to Beeson Castle and the little cruise afterwards. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up. 
if you want to uh, give us some comments down below subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the bell if you want to get notifications and in the next vlog we will be heading into Chester I'm trying to get a shot of the Airbus Beluga one of us will be one of us will be Hair's a bit unruly this morning. It's her fault. Why? Because you made me take my hat off. It's because you, your face was all in shadow. Yeah. It's bad enough already. It's weird. Like I, you couldn't see below here, so it's like I just had the lower face. I look kind of like Zorro. George is doing a poo. Oh, good. On camera. Now it is. There we go. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Congratulations for that. Everybody says more, George. There he is. People are constantly talking about, we need more George. Here he is, right there. There's George. That's right. enough. That's enough of George. There's our dog. Very cute. Yeah. We got a bit dark. Yeah. So it's underexposed. Now there's a train going past. Is he still pooping? No, he's not still Here pooping. Here he is. Is he? Oh my God. Our dog is... My hair's messed up, our dog's messed up. Michael's just talking to the castle. She told me to talk to the castle. I meant to talk to the camera. Yeah, she's like, why don't you do a talk to castle? And I was like, castle, how are you feeling up there? And it didn't answer. I was just like, we've got phones we can touch. And then I was like, why haven't we improved on pornography? I mean, really, oh think God. about it. <laughs> so, pretty sure there was cannons at that point. Promo. 15 so yeah, it should have been cannon. Small cannon, small gun. Might not have had anything big enough. It's an interesting time here. Ten? Yeah. Ranouf, the French guy. I can't remember his name. 